Yes, we are. Hi, this is Kelly with Gia's Italian Kitchen. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we are here for a very special event. I'm here with Tad, the director uh, at the Cedar Rapids Opera, and we have another very special guest who's going to come in in just a nanosecond. Um, but wherever you are joining from, uh, YouTube or Facebook, we have the chat going. So feel free to throw your questions and comments out in there. We will um, shout those out and get those answered. Uh, we're going to make a beautiful dish uh, from Italy. Uh, I'm sure you will have recognized it and a little appetizer. And we're going to talk about everything Italian and opera. Ooh. So um, our super, I mean, you're a special guest. Oh, thank you. But our super, like super, super special guest is Maria Natale from Opera Tosca, which is uh, the opera that Cedar Rapids Opera is doing next weekend. So we'll yeah. talk about that. Um, but welcome to Maria Natale. Now you're in from New York, right? Yes. Oh, actually New Jersey. New Jersey. I live okay. on the the border of Manhattan and New Jersey. Okay. We Hoffman. Awesome. Yeah. So tonight we are gonna do well, so you're from Sicily area, right? Your family? My family is from the center of Sicily, um, a, a small town called Villarosa, but just near Enna. And okay. my father's side is from Close to Palermo. Uh -huh. They're from Termini in Merese. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make um, a pasta carbonara. My family is from north of Florence. So we talked about beforehand um, that it's a little different of a recipe. You know, and, and there's a lot of foods that are like that, yeah. right? From yeah. Sicily to mid or oh, northern absolutely. Italy. Yeah. That are different. Mm -hmm. So you can correct me anytime. Oh, if no, I'm, not, I'm here. I'm once once, once, so we, like once we start the start this, and because my, so my mom comes on our episodes sometimes, and she's like, "Kelly, you're doing that wrong." <laughs> but that's my mom. But that's my mom too. So I usually do everything wrong as well. So I, you know. Okay, so we're gonna do the pasta carbonara, and we're gonna do a fig appetizer. Um, if you would like the class packet for this, which includes the um, equipment list, the, the recipe, and some some information about the Cedar Rapids Opera and some information about Gia's Italian Kitchen, you can email Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y, at Gia's Italian Kitchen, G-I-A-S, italiankitchen.biz, and we can get that out to you afterwards um, if you would like to recreate this if you're not cooking, cooking with us uh, already. So I'm going to start, we're going to start with pancetta and bacon. Because uh, bacon makes everything better. Yes, <laughs> indeed. This is not a health dish. Um, I'm going to get this going, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about, or we're going to talk a lot about Cedar Rapids Opera. So I'm using a really large uh, saucepan that has tall sides uh, because this is where everything in the end is going to end up, including the pasta. So uh, there's not going to be very much in here to start, but you want a really big pan. And I'm going to put just a little bit, maybe a tablespoon or two of extra virgin olive oil into the pan, just so that my bacon and pancetta don't stick at the very beginning. So I've got this on a medium heat, and I'm gonna give that just a minute, and then we're gonna throw stuff in there. My grandmother would always say, just a little bit of yeah. olive oil. Just, <laughs> a, just a little <laughs> bit, yeah. just a little bit. And she'd go on for like three minutes. <laughs> So you know what's funny and, and ironic? My grandma's name is Tosca. That's oh, isn't that crazy? That so um, I don't know if you can. Oh, you can't see it in the frame, but I'll nope. I'll pull it in there. Or do you want to grab it? Just, yeah, I'm happy to. Just for a little flash on the screen. Um, so this is my grandmother, Tosca Tanucci, uh, from around the Florence area, and 
Yeah, her name's Tal. Isn't that cool? That's so amazing. I was like, oh my gosh, we have to do something with the opera. Okay, so you have, um, you're in rehearsals right now. That's right. And when, what's, I know the performances are next weekend. So tell us, um, for people that are watching across the country, and you know, this is so cool. There's people that are tuning in from Arizona, Amazing. Portland, Florida, Chicago, and those are just the ones of people that like contacted me beforehand and actually told me where they were from. So if you would, if you're watching, again, we've got chats going for Facebook and YouTube. Put in the chat where you're tuning in from because like it's super cool. I would love to know where they're tuning in from. But if you are watching locally from Cedar Rapids area or Iowa City, the corridor, anywhere, um, you've got two performances coming up next weekend. So tell us what's going on. Yeah, next so weekend. please join us this next weekend on the seventh or the nineteenth, excuse me, at seven thirty at the Paramount. We're having the opening night of Tosca. It'll be at seven thirty. There are two intermissions and three acts. So there's lots of time to dive into the art and the passion and the story of Tosca, but also time to have a beverage in between. So then we'll also be back. <laughs> Also you be had back. To throw that in yes, there. Yeah. of course. What's better than opera and enjoying your time <laughs> in the theater? It's always so wonderful to take time and enjoy a night out at the theater. And then we have a Sunday performance as well at two o'clock on January twenty-first. So I hope you can come see Tosca and hear Maria live <laughs> and in person on the stage. It's such a beautiful theater, and we're so lucky to have Orchestra Iowa in the fit with Maestro Daniel Klein Connect at the helm. And we're just really, really thrilled for this production. It's the largest production we've done for quite a while. We okay. have over 30 people in the community chorus. We have over 20 in the children's chorus. We have over 20 young artists and then our three wonderful leads that have come to join us like Maria. And so we're just so thrilled to have all of the music come together for this production. It's really going to be wonderful. So. And if you haven't been down to the Paramount Theater, mm -hmm. for the people that are in the corridor, um, first of all, get down there. Get down there for something because... The, the Paramount Theater is downtown Cedar Rapids. It's on, what is it, 3rd and 2nd, um, right? Just yeah, off the river. Mm -hmm. And it is from 1925. It is the most gorgeous theater. It is so grand and beautiful. But there's such a wide variety of things that are in that theater, from the opera to, they even do movie night. Um, the orchestra does, they'll, they'll play and they'll put a movie up on the screen. So, you know, there are so many opportunities to get down there and support the arts in Cedar Rapids. Um, I know you have a lot of other things going on with the school districts, right? 100%. That you've got yes. so much going on with, with Cedar Rapids Opera. So we'll talk about that in a yes, little bit. But um, the the <laughs> opera being in there, it's just, it's such a gorgeous stage. Um, and yeah. like is, yeah. well, no, the stage isn't going to be extended because the band will be in the yeah, pit. The pit. Yeah. Yep, the orchestra so, okay. will be there. Yes, but it's Duh. still but incredibly it's still, gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're so lucky to have this gem in our community. Yeah. And that we get to use it in this way to make art and to share it with people is important and wonderful. So yeah. come to the Paramount for any sort of <laughs> fine arts activity that you can. That's for sure. <laughs> okay. So what we have in the pan, you can probably hear it starting to sizzle. I've got a half a pound of pancetta and a half a pound of bacon that I already cut up. So I just use a scissors um, to cut it up into kind of like bite-sized pieces. So I'm going to just give this a stir. And then I'm going to put these two to work. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oof. <laughs> you want to cry and cut the onion? Uh, yeah, I probably should cry. <laughs> Who's got my goggles? <laughs> you gonna do the onion? It'll get you ready for Tosca. You don't you know? want me to do the onion. <laughs> Should we do I the mean... appetizer first? Yes, okay. please. You want to? Okay. So this appetizer is, and if you have the packet, I, I put the title in there, but I didn't put the recipe because um, it's it's not really like we're not baking it, we're not doing anything to it, but we've got fresh figs and we've got dried figs. So depends on where you are. We're actually in Iowa and I shockingly was able to find real figs, but, or I mean fresh figs. Uh, but if you can't, you can use dried figs. And what we're going to do with them is um, grab, so there's some toothpicks over there mm -hmm. and we're going to just, it's kind of like just an assembly, but this is a super easy appetizer, quick appetizer. If you need, um, you know, something, if you've got people coming over these might be things that you just have in your kitchen. Um, so we're gonna take, why don't we take some of each of those and then we can kind of do a little taste test. So for these, since they're dry mm -hmm. or not dried, if you can see, there's a stem on there, you can totally eat it. Like my husband eats an entire, the apple, like yep. the core yeah, and everything. Yeah. So you can totally eat this, but if you don't wanna eat the little stem, just cut it off and just then, some off. yeah. 
And then we'll put them in our little serving dish. Now the ones that are dried. Oh, how do you cut? And oh, I, I will. I will poke All them. All right, in, sounds good. You know? <laughs> Teamwork. Hey, Teamwork this, makes the dream work. Is this foreshadowing a cost? Correct. You never, <laughs> we don't want Maria to have a knife. <laughs> you can't give. Yeah. You can't give Posca a knife. Yeah, you can't We're give Posca a knife. That much. is for sure. Okay, so <laughs> Posca, like many, not all, but many operas, there's there's love, there's yes. there's drama, there's tragedy, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not going to spoil the end, but like, can tell us more about the storyline, because okay. for me, when I when I go to whether it's the orchestra or the opera, it's very helpful for me to know either what the composer was like doing in his or her life at that time, because then I can kind of right. feel the music. And if you know the storyline before you enter the theater, you'll probably get more out of being there. So Absolutely. can you, what can you divulge? Yeah. Okay. I will tell you all of the stuff that is important and not that important for the ending, <laughs> but, uh, Tosca, Gloria Tosca, her name, is an actress, an opera singer. She is the most famous woman in all of Rome. It's set in Rome, mm -hmm. Italy. Yep. And she has a boyfriend, her lover, Mario Cavaradossi, who is a painter. Mm -hmm. And he's very, um, he's completely in love with Tosca, except she is a very jealous girlfriend mm. so she is always suspecting that he is cheating on her mm, going around okay. and she uh you see that in the first act and uh you know she's saying that the painting that he is painting is this beautiful woman mm -hmm. with uh blonde hair and blue eyes and Tosca notoriously has black eyes they mm. say it many times and dark hair mm -hmm. yep and um so she he kind of quells her you know fears about him cheating on her however cheating on her with who the lady in the painting the la she believes that he is painting a, a a woman that he's cheating with and it is it oh is, it is oh i missed friends, that okay yes his friends um, his friend's sister, La Savanti, mm -hmm. who frequents the church very frequently, oh. and he is in the church where he's okay. working. Where he is yes. working, yes. painting. Yes. Sorry, yes. I left that out. No, no, he's no. In, okay. He's in the church painting this beautiful painting of Mary Magdalene. Yes, That's yes. What he says, but oh, and she believes okay. that he is Got painting uh, La Savanti. Mm. So okay. Scarpia, Baron Star Scarpia, who's the villain, is very aware of all of this turmoil going on between Tosca and Cavarossi, and he tries to use that for his advantage because he is in love with Tosca. Mm, okay. So he leads Tosca to believe that Mario really is cheating or tries to um and there's a whole lot of other stuff that goes okay. on <laughs> based around napoleon yeah right, and, yeah, right. Uh, the history yeah. And the mm -hmm. history yeah so we're in the napoleonic wars right right and mario is not cheating he is harboring a fugitive in the church oh who has information, okay uh that uh that scarpia wants okay and so Tosca now is left the decision to give, she eventually finds this information about the fugitive that Mario is hiding mm -hmm. in his home. She either gives up this information or she let her lover die being tortured. So, don't, don't, what don't. do you think she's gonna do? <laughs> How does she get out of this predicament? <laughs> that is a we predicament. Will we will, we will find, find out. out. Okay. <laughs> okay, stay tuned. Okay, so to, back to okay, our thing. So some more of these. I want to do a few of the dried okay. ones also, okay. just because. Did we cut I, anything off of the thing? You know okay, what? I these can... actually don't have the stems. Oh, oh. some of them might. All right. Might um, be easier. But I think. Yeah, great. They fell off, or you know, want to dry them? got yeah. taken off when they were dried. I don't know, but they don't seem to have the stems. I mean, and, I but eat if they them do, with the cut them off. Stem on, yeah. Um, and then, mm -hmm. I love goat cheese, so oh, we're gonna just love, 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 love goat cheese. So we're gonna cut some goat cheese 
There's another one for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. While you're doing that, we have a yeah. question. Oh, yeah. Why you're using both bacon and pancetta instead of one or the other? Good question. Um, so usually you the recipe would call for guanciale. Guanciale. If like if you're in Italy, which is the pig cheek, right? Well, or is well, no guanciale is the is the wild boar. But isn't it it's, from the cheek? You well you use it from the cheek. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh I'm sorry. They usually use cingale, which is wild boar. Oh. And it's a fattier meat, and you would okay. use the guanciale, which is yes, the, it's, the, it's the cheek. Okay, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, and it's it's hard to find. And very it's hard very, to find. Very expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so then, so then my my mom or my grandma would use pancetta, um, to make this even less of a healthy dish. Um, <laughs> adding a little bit of bacon in, um, adds a little more fat because we're actually not going to drain the fat. And it just makes it actually a richer and creamier sauce because the fat is going to stay in the pan and we're going to toss it with all the other delicious ingredients. Um, you don't have to. You could just use the pancetta. Um, it, it's just going to add uh, a little, actually a little more creaminess. It's probably not going to adjust the flavor too much, um, really. No, I don't think it When you get all yeah. the other stuff in there, it's really probably not going to. But it brings the fat content up. Right. And yep. makes Which makes everything, everything better. Everything better. <laughs> everything better. Right. Okay, so we're going to take um, the goat cheese, and then, actually, let me do here so we don't drip all over the place. And then, could you grab the honey? Yep. We're going to drizzle a little bit of honey on these. Sorry. That was good. And this is just local, mm -hmm. local honey. Drizzle. Just drizzle a little bit on. Or maybe open the other yeah, one. <laughs> I thought this one was, oh. it looked like it was moving. Yeah. We might get it. There we there go. We okay. Go. So just a little bit. So mm -hmm. we're, we are adding more sweet things to it. So we've got the honey, the dates are, or the figs are pretty sweet. Um, but then the other thing I love to add is balsamic. Mm -hmm. I love balsamic or fig balsamic. Um, this is actually from Italy. I don't know if you can really see it in the, uh, film but it's very thick because like wine this ages in oak or, or you know cherry wood or a, a multiple a wood barrel for many 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 years so uh this one has been aged for 10 years and it is let me grab a spoon here mm -hmm. it is so thick and there is no sugar added like if you buy a glaze at the store there is sugar mm -hmm. added in those to make them thicker this is mm -hmm that thick with nothing mm -hmm. added it's just phenomenal have you you want oh, do you want to try that. it of yes. course yeah. oh my okay. gosh definitely <laughs> yes okay. so here i'll and this <laughs> this vineyard right. is <laughs> leonardi it's uh, about an hour outside of florence and uh we were there a few years ago yeah just you taste it all by itself Thank it's you. so ridiculous um but this awesome this uh Leonardi, oh, wow. I don't know if it was the 10 year or maybe it was like the 50 year because we we went to the the barrel rooms and they let us taste, um, you know, they did the 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 plunger thing where you pull it out. Yeah. Um, but they had barrels that were like literally 50 years and 100 years yeah. of, and they didn't let us taste those, but they let us taste these. Um, Everything gets better with at, time, right? This was at uh, Kate Middleton's and Prince William's wedding. So I had to buy some. <laughs> Not that it matters, but like it's so good. That's how good it is. So we're drizzling it on the figs, just a little bit. Okay. So why don't you guys try those, and then we'll make some more of these official taste test. Right? Official taste test. Ready? I found my purpose. All right. Here cheers. Go. Cheers. What do you think? Mm. Very, very good. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, yeah. we need to make more. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we do need to make, make some more. more. Okay, so more. the next thing I'm going to do is I have a big, like a five quart stock pot. I'm going to fill that about halfway with water <laughs> so that we can cook our pasta. Um, we're not going to make homemade pasta tonight because we're going to be too busy talking. Um, but if, you know, I think there's a few people out there. Hello in Arizona. Uh, I think they made their own pasta today in prep for, uh, for dinner tonight. So super, super awesome. If you guys have a picture of that. I know everyone would love for you to post that uh, in the chat. 
Um, but I'm going to just make some, some pasta here. So I'm going to get some water going. Okay, so Tad, do you want to start that onion? We do need the oh onion. Oh boy. I know. Get your goggles ready. We need the onion. You want to just dice? So yeah, so we're going to do just one. We're not to cut Hang this on, side, sorry. Right? You're, yeah, it's, I just watched a video I know. on that. You got to keep that I'm on. I'm going to learn. See, this yeah. is where I get nervous. I'm going to screw this oh, up. Are you doing it like the Food Network half. way? So half now, right? Oh, man. I use a chopper at home. There's no <laughs> shame. You can chop the whole thing really quick. It works well. You know, there's no shame in this. So, Maria, please teach. Yeah. Teach away. So what I would do, I'm already like, almost going to cry. I'm not, I mean, I have my own little ways, you know, but pour this a little bit so we can mm -hmm. get the outside. Yeah, definitely. Off. I'm not the best chopper in the world. Here, you I'll, can I'll put your garbage off. right in there. Okay. I'll pull it off here. And I'm going to see okay. if it makes some of these while you guys are doing that. Oh. Look, it's coming off pretty easy. Mm -hmm. So we have a, one yellow onion. You can use um, a white onion. Or a Vidalia, I would not use a red because it'll be uh, a little strong, I think, for this dish. But uh, really, whatever onion you want to use is fine. And we're going to just use one, and we're going to chop it up um, and dice it so that if you think of bite-sized pieces in your pasta, whatever size onion you want is fine. But I like to dice them up so you don't get we a giving chunk Tosca in there. a knife. Giving Tosca nine. Uh oh! Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> that is true. So I'm not the best chopper. I'm girl. not either. I use I a know. cool little gadget. But you're doing like the Food Network version. Of, I am doing the Food Network of the cutting of yes, the onion. I am. I am impressed. I am. I know. I watched it. I. I, I love watching cooking shows. Do you? I watch them all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hey, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so happy to be on this. But now I'm love getting it. nervous. I'm getting put to the test now. How do you chop an onion? No. You know? No. <laughs> so um, how thin do we want these? Do you want some pretty thin? Okay. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I um, mean, as thin as you can get them, but no pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> how are you doing that? Kelly or Maria, do you have a recommended yeah, fresh cut. or okay. dried pasta brand? Do you want to cut it? Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, you cut. Okay. Um, you talk. <laughs> I'll let you answer that first. Wait, do you wait, have a wait, favorite? Do you have a recommended dry or fresh pasta brand? Uh, we usually use Barilla in my house. Okay. Uh, however, if the way to really find like a pasta that is like good quality is to look at the color of the pasta. So if it's like a darker yellow, if it's if it is an egg pasta, that's one thing mm -hmm. that, that will change the color. Yep, yep. But if it is lighter in color, that means that it was cured better. And like when they leave it out, they have an adequate amount to dry mm. out the um, out the dough. So oh, that's what you look for is the, the color of the pasta. Oh, interesting. Dry pasta. Or even dry pasta or or, or fresh that. pasta. <laughs> Oh, learning how to cut an onion and how to pick my pasta. Yeah, so we can I've make done those really like well. Even smaller. I know I'm working at it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can I wait? Can I do oh, some please. nice? No. Oh, make no. it beautiful. <laughs> no, I'm By not. All I, means. I'm not criticizing your onion, you but should. I am going to give you some nice. Yes, features. please. <laughs> Fingers back or something. You never know. We should probably teach Tosca some. Yes. <laughs> I know you know, but the character might not. We may not want to give you a knife, actually. <laughs> I'm, I'm second guessing giving you a knife. <laughs> all right. So I'm happy to be the guinea okay, pig so, for the knife safety. So you want your hand pretty close to the front of mm -hmm. the blade, not way back here because you're going to have more control. Mm -hmm. And then if you're holding something, like when you started the onion, mm -hmm. yeah, you're going to start with your fingertips down, obviously, so you mm -hmm. don't chop those off. But now that we're that helps. kind yeah. of in the okay. land of uh, we've got our, our stash and we're going to just – cut them smaller, mm -hmm. you're going to take your, your right hand, right? Yep, okay. Right -handed. You're going to take your left hand okay. and hold it here. You're okay. not going to do this because you're not, and you're going to fingertips up. Knife safety until we have the yeah. red sauce going. Yeah. And you're going to do this so that everything's <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> that was a good one. All right. So like this. Yes. So and just in. kind of, so the tip is mm -hmm. going to stay down. Okay. And you're just going to pivot. There, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Quick study. Uh -huh. Take notes, there Stephanie. You go. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. So we're going to throw this onion in with That's the bacon. That's the most even onion anyone's it ever is, cut. It's perfect. Is, it is beautiful. It's perfect. 
Girl All right. Okay, let me steal it. Yes, I'm just going to take the whole board from you. Please do. Okay, and we're going to, like I said, we're not draining the bacon, so this is going right in the pan with all the bacon fat. Yum. And we're going to get these sautéed. I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. It's bad for me. Yeah, it's, it's bad. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I shouldn't take it personally, but this onion. Let me tell you. Okay, I was so, just thinking about the ending of the opera. There you go. And, and you were crying. Okay. <laughs> do you want to, so to get the oils off of your hands, do you want rinse? to oh, just yeah, I'll rinse do that. your hands? Because then, you, then you won't the cry. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> and let me, here's a towel. Awesome. Thank here's you. Here's soap if you want soap. Yes, awesome. Okay. Actually, I'm going to have you go here this way. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Um, okay, so here's the dried. Ooh. Okay. Let's taste those, and I know yeah. I didn't taste the first one, but I want you to taste this one, and tell oh. me if you think it's how different it is. Totally different texture. Mm -hmm. it's softer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's nice. I like that a lot. Do you mm -hmm. like that better? The dried from the fresh. Well, I think they're both amazing. Like that, mm -hmm. this one's a little sweeter. And this mm -hmm. one's a little more, you know. Okay. The balsamic was the key on the okay. first one. The, the balsamic, balsamic is, is like ridiculous. Okay, here, let's yeah. make you one, Tad, because yeah. you didn't get the dried one. All right. And then you can do. Happy to be a tester. The taste yeah. test. Then, if you guys have watched any of my episodes in the past, you know that I have, I call them my pit crew. I've got helpers out in the perimeter here doing the chat, taking the pictures, helping, like handing me things that I forgot. Um, so thank you to all of you guys who are here helping. Um, but we feed them also. So they're going to have to get some too. Okay, so taste. All right, I'll grab it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, with the time. Oh. I'll let, so I'll let's pass pull this in. So this yep. is um, my time plant from outside. So I've got my perennial garden and my annual garden. Oh, and ironically, we have our master gardener here. Um, to t <laughs> correct me if I screw, it, screw up what I'm saying here. Um, but time, even in the Midwest, the plant is going to come back. So I'm going to sprinkle some of this on there. So what I did um, so that I could have fresh time throughout the winter, put it in a big vase of water. And I, I don't know if you can see it on, on the camera, but it's starting to root um, so that I can have this throughout the winter. And it's already January and it's still oh, it's so like bright. looking wow. great. Yeah. Um, awesome. It smells great. Well, look behind you guys. Here, let me pull this in. This oh. is so cool. Oh, wow. So I did that with my rosemary plant. Look at that. So I did that, and it's starting to root as well. Now the rosemary plant, actually, I didn't. Did I tell you about that? How technically the rosemary plants are not going to make it through the winter in the Midwest outdoors. Outdoors. But I have been transplanting my rosemary plant for like five years in, wow. out, in, wow. out, and it's bigger than my dog. And so, like, it's huge. Like that is. Yeah, it's it's when they, huge. When they grow, they grow. Yeah. My mother has, my parents live in California, mm -hmm. and she has so much rosemary growing on the side of her house that she can't, she needs to get rid of some of it. It's oh, taking, wow. It's taking over the entire hillside. Oh, wow. And feeding some of her other, you know, herbs. And oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. It can go wild when it's in the right condition. But I'm jealous mm -hmm. because it's yeah. it stays alive every year. Yeah, it really does. Um, So I, I'm trying. I'm attempting that. Oh, and pot of, oh, oh, okay. Maybe, I'll, but they're, they're, they're working okay. Oh. And then they'll make it through the winter better? Okay, okay, I will do that. Should I do that with the rosemary too? Oh, okay. Well, so the, with the rosemary, I'm hedging. Um, that so my plant, you can stir. You want me to? Yeah, I'm go ahead happy and stir. To, this is something oh, I can amazing. do. Quite you can confident. stir. Okay, good. Confident. Um, so I I bought a cover and I kind of wrapped yeah, it with a sheet. I get the, I and know. I did and all that just mm -hmm. to see because it says Flavor. sub zero. Flavor. So we'll see if it makes it through the winter. If it doesn't, mm -hmm. that's my hedge. And I still have that's, my that's plant. How gardening and cooking are similar. You just, the more you do, the more you try. Mm -hmm. The more you fail, mm. the more you learn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. like my knife skills. <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone in the chat, it sounds like singing opera. Too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> someone in the chat was complimenting us. 
Thank oh, yeah? you. Oh. Thank you. I am honored. I'm a quick learner. That is so funny. Okay, right. so here's the dried oh, one. They are you. they are so different. Yeah, they're different. But they're they're both delicious. Mm -hmm. Those are good. Okay, let's make a few I'm gonna more. I'm going to for the dry as well. For the honestly. They're delicious. both sweet. They're yeah, different texture. Okay. Very Can good. you hand me a Oh no, here's these are these have toothpicks in them. Okay, so Ted, what else is going on with the Cedar Rapids Opera? Um, in town, like with the school district or yes. or other. Tell us more. So January is such a busy month. So we welcome over 20 young artists into town. And we find these young artists all around the country through our um, national search. And so this last September, we had auditions and we had over 475 applicants for oh, the wow. Young Arts Program, wow. which is wonderful. Wow. And we went to five different states to hear as many of them as we could. And a lot also submitted videos as well. And we were able to hear just massive amounts of talent all across the country. Unfortunately, we could only have 20 of them come to town. So we're very, very fortunate to have 20 of the best young artists in the country in Cedar Rapids for this three-week period. But a small group of those young artists that come here also do our children's outreach opera. And so this year, we're doing our second year of Charlie and the Wolf, which is mm -hmm. a, it's a wonderful children's opera nice. where Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart comes back to a classroom along with Charlie Parker for Logan, a little uh, child in the class who falls asleep during music class. And in her dreams, Mozart and Charlie Parker come back to visit her in her dreams. And they teach her about music and how even though things are different and at different times and people are different, we all make music with the same notes. And it's just a beautiful message about how we can all come together through music and that music is for everyone. And it can tell the story that sometimes we can't find the words to say. So it's just a wonderful opportunity. We had a wonderful performance at the library, the Cedar Rapids Public Library this last Saturday. And we go through 10 to 12 um, elementary schools in town and we usually nice. perform for about 4,000 students. That's awesome. So it's been really, really wonderful. And it's always so enriching and just really reaffirming of the great work that we're doing when you see how excited these children get in the schools. Yeah. Because for a lot of them, it's their first opportunity to see opera. And I grew up yeah. in rural Iowa. And the first opera I saw was a traveling troupe of opera singers in my senior year of high school. And it had such a profound impact on me that literally now opera is my life mm -hmm. and everything I think about is opera based. And so I'm just so fortunate um, to be with a group of artists that also share that kind of commitment to fostering opera and fine arts in our schools and, and bringing in the next generation of singers and audience members and just lovers of community and opera and singing and music and all the wonderful things that opera can offer. So that's, awesome. that's some of what we're doing in addition to Tosca on the Paramount stage. So, so is that typical for other cities that <clears throat> the, the opera company of say Chicago or LA or I mean any mm -hmm. city, yeah. like do they all go into the schools or is this unique to Cedar Rapids? Um, so there is a smaller subset that go into the schools. This is a, a very nationwide you know, problem that we're trying to do is how do we make sure everyone feels welcome to opera? And it all starts by making sure people understand and see opera from a young age and yeah. can see it in its raw, pure form up close in a gymnasium or in an auditorium or in a cafeteria yeah. and have experience. So there are quite a few opera companies around the country that are doing similar style tours, but not every city, not every opera company is doing this. Okay. Yeah. So it is unique. So yes, indeed. Us. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah, no, we're doing a lot of really wonderful things. High five. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> And I still have all my fingers. Great. <laughs> okay. We're going to make a few more of these, but let's awesome. move on to next phase of the carbonara. So um, we need, of course, garlic. Um, so I hate to peel garlic. So I buy garlic, and I'm sure most stores in the country have these pre-peeled garlic. Um, so, Tag, could you plug in my little KitchenAid yep. food processor over there? Another task, I'm very confident. Oh, yeah? Okay. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I thought I had this open. And we are going to chop these up. Now, of course, if you don't have a food processor, you could just chop these up uh, with your knife. But I love to just use my food processor. So, what we're going to do actually doesn't so have that's that all the long. Farther. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's in the camera. It's fine. Um, right. So what I am going to do is just put about half of this bag right into the food processor. That's going to smell good. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And then I this know. is going to take like two seconds. Done. Convenient. I know. It's amazing. That's the best, best way to do it. And then you've got fresh chopped garlic. So mm -hmm. what I love to do, here's my little garlic hack, is I'll buy, like if you have uh, Sam's or Costco in town, they've got a bag that's like this big. And I will do this in batches. And then those little bell jars, your little bell jars, like in the canning section of a grocery store um, with the tops. Cover, fill this up. Actually, I'll just do it now because we're going to use not all of this. That's a great idea. It's amazing. Time so, saving. Yep. Great idea because Super. a lot of times when you buy it in the store, mm -hmm. it oh. goes bad so quickly. Well, when you buy, that's a good point. When you buy it in the store, um, in the pre, in the jar, there's citric acid and there's other crap in there. Don't buy those. Please don't buy those. Buy the garlic, chop it up. Put it in here, and then what I do is cover with olive oil, just enough to cover. This is going to preserve it. Give it wow. a little stir. Stick this in the freezer. It's going to last for like three, four months. Wow. So I have like wow. 10 of these wow. in my freezer. Yeah. And go. then literally all of this work, Yeah, a lot of people even if you're making like a stir fry, too. it's you're done. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of so, people don't know you can uh, freeze garlic, but absolutely. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. Uh, with the olive oil, I've never done that before. Mm -hmm. I'm watching. Mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Super hack. Love it. And so it'll So we talk keep... about the garlic stuff. I'm going to interrupt because I just am yeah. so curious about yeah. this. You hear people talk about olive oil and they're not real olive oil options available a lot. Ooh. And so how do you know? Like what what's the right way to think about buying the right olive oil? Because there's all these kind of talks out and about about, you know, going into a grocery store and buying olive oil that's not really olive oil. I love that question. I'm going to I'm going to yeah. I want to I want to hear your yeah, answer again. first and then and then I'll fill in, but I want to yeah, hear I'm what you curious, say first. So well, there's a few different ways. I know, I know it sounds crazy, but I know that Costco, mm -hmm. they travel around the world and they have people going to different you know, countries and everything and making sure that their products are, are pure. And I hope they are, but they, they vow that they are. Mm -hmm. But um, also well, what we do, my, my husband just brings it back from the, oh. <laughs> what, my, yeah. my, my, yeah. his uncle's neighbor had an olive, like a whole olive grove, and they, I mean, oh, at, the bottom, so cool. at the bottom of the can that we brought back in our suitcase, he's just like, you can see all the bits of olives at the bottom. I mean, it's like literally straight they just from, pressed they it. just pressed yeah. it from that. That's, that's, that's okay. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But the smell is like a really big yeah. uh, kind of tell uh -huh. on uh but knowing my mom, my mom can go up to olive oil and she can just smell it and be like, oh, that's not that bad. Well, yeah, because, no, yeah. and that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. If it smells like an olive, an olive, mm -hmm. then it's good. If it smells mm -hmm. like a crayon, it's, it's not, not good. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when you're in the store, obviously, you can't smell it. So, oh, I just don't. Mm -hmm. No problem. Just, <laughs> nah. And if you can't bring it from the mm -hmm. crusher, like Maria again, the main the main two things that um, that I will tell you it's not the it's not the name it's not the brand. There's five million brands of of olive oil when you think of Spain and Greece and Italy, um, but it needs to say extra virgin olive oil, not olive Light. oil with a bunch of adjectives because that means that there's probably other oils added to it and it is not pure extra virgin olive oil. The other thing is it should say first cold pressed, which means it's not been heated. It's been pressed within 72 hours of the olive being picked off the tree. And the other, and if you forget all of that, the other thing is generally, and this is not 100%, but generally it's going to be in a glass or in a tin. Mm -hmm. It's not in plastic. Mm -hmm. The plastic is generally, that's um, the ice maker. It's not. A dying animal. <laughs> in the freezer. It's good. Ah, in the freezer. Um, generally, glass or tin, because I buy mine, it's like a three-quart mm -hmm. um, big tin uh, from the from the Italian grocery store. But those are those are your biggies. It needs, and if you look on the ingredients, 
it says literally just extra virgin olive oil, period, 100%. Then you know there, other, there aren't other things added. And there's um, the owners of the Brick Kitchen in Independence. I don't know if anyone's watching from there, but um, he, oh, there are. Okay. So Nate has, um, he has a fabulous story about, because they do olive oil tastings up there. And um, there, many, many years ago, the, um, the lanterns that they would use uh, before, I don't know if this was officially before electricity, but um, oh, the, gas the gas, yeah, the gas lanterns. And, uh, you, you know, fast forward a few decades, and there isn't, especially the regulation in the States that there is over mm -hmm. in Europe with, no, with yeah, food. Um, that is actually in some olive oils today because it is not regulated. That's nasty. I don't know which ones have them and which ones don't, but if you buy one that says 100% extra virgin olive oil packed in Italy or product of Italy first, cold pressed, you know you're getting 100% olive oil Should and you're not notes. getting yeah. I know you're not getting the the crap so that's that's really how you know it's not um necessarily the name of the the company yep. um but well thank you for that the, tangent yeah. I was curious <laughs> no I love it okay carbonara so um we I use four eggs now we talked about this beforehand mm -hmm. that you have your grandma did something different so I was speaking my mother-in-law is from Milan and she uses all egg yolk my wow. uh my my husband's aunts and uncles they use three eggs and one egg yolk to okay. make it lighter in their opinion adding more to make it lighter okay. so um personally I think eight like whatever your preference is, you know, if okay. you want to make it like a little more dense, you use all egg yolk. It's, okay. It is true. It does kind okay. of like fluffing up the egg a little yeah. bit. So you don't, uh, when you use more white. Uh, so I think half and half is a really great, that's what you're doing. Half yeah. And half so I use two really whole great eggs. Middle ground. Yeah. And then two <laughs> yolks. Mm -hmm. So, um, Tad right in front of you is the garbage. So I'm going to stick this in front of you. If you want to do, right. um, two whole eggs. All right. And then a lot of two, pressure. two of the, can you do the yolks or do you want to? <laughs> I could do them if you need to. Can you do to. the yolk or do you I mean, need you like a. you might need a sacrificial egg just in case I screw up. Do you need a tool or a, or let me, right. I can get you a little bowl so that if. <laughs> well, you do, you pass it back yeah, and forth. Yeah, you pass it back and Right, okay. Yeah. So yeah. that if Thanks, you, mom. So Good this, work. This is the whole, like this is the end point, right? Great. So do the full eggs in here. Great, I can start there. And then like. Maybe do your yolk in there. So and then we'll add it. Yeah. yeah safety first. Just safety first. Safety first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then we're going to use um, a lot of cheese. So question for you. Do you guys use more um, Pecorino Romano or Parmigiano Reggiana? So in my family's house, uh, like my mother, she uses Pecorino is like my mom. Everything That's pecorino. us too. Like yeah. Yep. Big yep. Of pecorino. I'm just all day long, just cutting it up, eating. Uh, it, I tend to go more towards Parmesan. Okay. It's like it's very, it has that sweeter, that sweeter taste, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have as much. It's not as salty. Yeah. 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 Approval. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So that's more of my preference. Okay. But the pecorino is definitely my family's go-to for sure. 100%. Okay. That's what ours yeah. is too. And my grandma used the pecorino. But yeah. in uh, my husband's side, it's that that gran padana. That that is like what they go for. Okay. So okay. Like, it's still the hard cheese. It's still yeah. the salty yep. hard cheese, but um, that is definitely what they. Okay. Got and it's it. kind of regional, mm -hmm. right? On where it did, it where you are in the country mm -hmm. as to mm -hmm. do you have more access to the sheep or the cows, right? Because yeah, sure. they're mm -hmm. they're from different mm -hmm. animals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, the the pecorino. So we're using pecorino cuz that's what my mm -hmm. my grandma always used. We actually went to um to the my mother and I went to the factories to see how the cheese oh, cool. were made yeah. and uh it all depends on where the, the the name of the cheese is where the cow was born. So if the cow was born on like one side of the fence, 
and not the other side of the fence. Oh. Then that's how that's the exact name of the cheese that they would use. Yeah. That's, Makes sense. That's it's the source, us, yeah, right? So it's the, the source. The Pecorino it Romano could, is from that region. Be on the other side oh, of the fence. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay, so what we're gonna do with these eggs is we're gonna whisk them up mm-hmm. like a scrambled egg. And we're going to add a cup of, if you've got pecorino or parmesan, I'm going to add this. And that's about a cup. And um, we're going to just combine that. And we're going to add that at the very end. Uh, So just get that super combined. And then we're going to just set it aside. Okay, then the next thing we're going to do, I have my pasta in the water. We're going to add the green peas and some fresh ground black pepper into, so we're starting to kind of build our sauce. So we've got the the pancetta and the bacon and the onions and the garlic, and now we're gonna just keep adding things. Um, So I'm putting in, this bag is kind of a double bag, but maybe like 10, 12 ounces of uh, fresh or frozen peas. Right into the bacon fat. I think I've achieved that's pretty, it. That's, that's pretty thorough. Yeah. Well, you know, they said well incorporated. Well incorporated. <laughs> <laughs> to a T for Tosca. Okay, and I'm going <laughs> to... Excuse me. Shameless, shameless. Well, dad jokes. Shameless. Know, keep on coming. <laughs> well, with a four-month-old, we got to yeah, keep going. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so you said you've done Tosca before. I have, yes. So where did you do Tosca before? I last Last season, I sang Tosca at uh, Opera San Jose in California. Oh, cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it was a beautiful production. We had six beautiful shows, and I could not pass up an opportunity to sing it again. And I'm very happy to be here in Cedar Rapids. Have you ever been here before? No. This no. Is okay. My, this is my first time in this perfect weather. I live in New Jersey. Oh. But, and I've been there for a long time, and we do not get any What? Here. Really? No, no, no. It's not, not like this. Not like this. Yeah. Not like this. Not this. So if you are not tuning in locally, we're in Cedar Rapids, <laughs> Iowa, about four hours west of Chicago. And we have about 18 inches of snow on the ground right now. And it is negative 10 actual temperature right now with a feels like of negative 39. Welcome so to Iowa! That's, that's why we need a little extra fat. <laughs> oh, right. Keep us warm. That's why oh, my God. Right. This is insane. Right? It is rough on the throat. Mm-hmm. That I will oh, tell you that. Yeah. Breathing in that cold air. So what air. do you do about that? Uh, so I have a humidifier at night. Okay. I have a lot of people are wearing masks over their mouth so then they don't breathe in the cold air. Oh. Um, also, your body tenses a lot when it's really yeah. cold, and so oh, that, that yeah. affects your throat, affects everything. So I'm either staying warm, keeping your throat warm, drinking warm liquids. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, staying We're just staying inside. healthy. Yeah. yeah, staying inside. Yeah. Right. Just don't go outside if you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, but I'm very, very happy to be at this company, the Cedar Rapids Opera. I mean, it's everyone is so warm and welcoming and this top-notch um you know top-notch direction everything here oh good incredible oh, good leader for this company and um really driving this into being a really amazing company for the country well i'm you know, so excited forefront. yeah so excited so mm-hmm. it's next weekend friday night seven thirty. sunday two or two thirty. Two. two yeah o'clock. yep mm-hmm. um we have a question, Maria. Yes. Have you done other Puccini roles? And if so, what was your favorite? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, that's a great question. Nice. Actually, I have sung a lot of Puccini, and Puccini is my home composer. That is what I sing most of. So I have sung uh, Many Butterflies. Many Butterflies. Um, that is a dear, dear favorite role of my sing. I sing La Boheme. I um, oh. sing Julio from Toronto. Uh, however, Tosca is, you know, you can't choose what's your favorite. It's Your favorite is what you're singing in the moment. I mean, and if that's not the case, then get out of the business, you know? <laughs> it's like uh, you've got, you put your whole life and your whole heart into what you're doing right at that moment, and then you leave that on the stage. So 
So pasta right now is my favorite. And it is, it's, I mean, it is the epitome of pasta. Well, it brings you to the it height of is. storytelling yes. and you get to completely exactly. envelop yourself in this character mm -hmm. and go on this journey in rehearsal and then on the performance. And, you know, from the audience perspective to the stage perspective, we all get to go on this same journey together. Mm -hmm. And through the music of Puccini, he just takes us along. And so it's just what and really it's makes re it. It's relatable. People oh, 100%. That, that 100%. Offer is not relatable, but it really is because they were real. It's just story of real humans on right. you know the realism. You know, it's very real. It's not. I mean, there's some melodramatic moments, we of course, might say, but uh, the storyline is very easy to follow because uh, they're just simple. Man falls in love with woman. There's another man who loves the woman. Sounds like reality TV. Reality TV. <laughs> it is reality but TV. But also, it is in Italian, but we always uh, have, whenever you go to the opera, there will always be supertitles, almost always. Mm -hmm. But in Cedar Rapids, there will always be supertitles. So the English is going to be above the stage. If you're sitting underneath the balcony, there are two screens underneath the balcony that tell you the story as you go. So it's no different than watching your favorite TV show on a streaming service mm -hmm. and watching with supertitles. Yeah, absolutely. It's exactly the same. And so you're always right there in the action. You get to read the joke as you hear it, and you hear the music as it comes together. And it's just a nice, relaxing evening to enjoy a story that you might not hear yeah. in this way. So I think it's really a relatable yeah. way to come and to a show. And one more thing to say mm -hmm. about opera, this is like a really passionate subject of mine, is that people are allowed to express what they are feeling in Correct. the audience. Yes. Like, I think a lot of people come to opera, they think, Oh, I should. Do I clap here? Do I not clap oh. here? Do I cry? Do mm -hmm. I? Yes, absolutely. You feel like clapping? Please clap. Of course. Please anytime. Clap. Anytime. Anytime. Okay. anytime. Of course. Okay. The soprano walks on stage. Please clap. Oh, indeed. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> Bravo. Absolutely. But also, as you come, you, it, it's very much an opportunity to come as you are. You yeah. have the opportunity to dress up and be as extravagant as you want. Or dress down if you Or you can to. come in yeah. your comfy clothes yeah. and just be there to enjoy an, amuse, um, an amazing evening of just storytelling and music and the beautiful sets and costumes and lights and all of these other things that come together to make opera. Absolutely. Opera is all encompassing of these art forms and it's really kind of mm -hmm. special to see them all happen together at the same time mm -hmm. in the same place. Mm -hmm. So. We're both very passionate yeah, about okay. opera. <laughs> and I can't, have been I can't for years, tell. Right? <laughs> I can't tell at all. So, <laughs> I love yeah. it. So what else would you say to the local audience on what they should expect when they come to the Paramount next, yes. next weekend? And by the way, in the details of this event um, are, is a link. But if you can't find that, it's artsiowa.com. And it will bring you right to the homepage to buy those tickets to the Paramount Theater for the Tosca Opera. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in northern Iowa in a rural town, and there wasn't a lot of access to arts. And as we are in Cedar Rapids and we have such a beautiful pinnacle of our community at the mm -hmm. Paramount, we're able to just go and park downtown. Parking is very easy and free on the weekends and the evenings. So it's easy to get down into a parking garage That's or on anywhere on the street. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really convenient. And we've done such a great job with our city planning to make this all possible. But you walk into the theater, there will be people there to greet you and take your tickets. If you still need a ticket, buy it ahead of time. But if you still need a ticket, you can buy a ticket right there at the box office. There is will call available if you call in and want your tickets to wait for you at the door. All of those are options for you. Bring your coat and leave your coat with coat check, right? There are a lot of <laughs> options to be comfortable in the theater. And come early because before the show, the hour before curtain, the curtain is when the show is going to start. So an hour before, so at 6.30 on Friday or 1 o'clock on Sunday, you can come and listen to Dr. Anna Barker give a speech and a talk about Tosca and the history of how it came to be oh. in Napoleon and how all of these factors of Italian culture and France coming on down kind of created the the story and the kind of the plot of Tosca. And it's really fascinating to see how history plays such a pivotal role in this story. And it's always wonderful to have a little bit of background before you go into an opera, because then you catch some of the smaller nuances of what's happening. You're more free to enjoy that change of key or that swelling climax mm -hmm. in the music and the orchestra. And so you'll just be able to just enjoy and, and be a part of the immersive experience versus trying to catch up on what's happening because it's all there and laid out for you. And it can be just a comfortable and relaxing evening. But so. even if you want to just 
Of course. Let's just sit there and not know anything and just sit there and enjoy Well, the story the is told the for you. Yeah, it's, it's so easy to follow Correct. what's going on. It is. Mm -hmm. And it's not ever too long in the seats, right? You'll be able to get up for intermission and stretch your legs a little bit and be right back. And so, have some concessions. There's correct. Some concessions exactly. And enjoy some nice. food and some yep. beverages and, mm -hmm. and, and mingle and talk to your community and talk to your friends who you bring along to the opera with you. You know, and just it's a great time <laughs> to be just to be out and in public and in, in a part of your community in a way of fine arts and bringing something more to what we do. I know. I just I love it. And I'm I just I'm excited to share that with everyone. So hopefully want to come and come and see the show <laughs> and hear Maria sing even yeah. more. Yes. <laughs> So we are almost pulling together our carbonara. So I have uh, put in my spinach as well so that it starts to wilt. And I drained my pasta, but I saved some of the pasta water because that uh, starchy water is going to help make our sauce. So set that aside. And then once your uh, spinach starts to wilt, we're going to put the uh, pasta right in the dish um, and get it nice and mixed up. And my Amazing. spinach is actually oh, already great. starting to wilt a little bit. So I'm going to start to move my pasta. Amazing. If you could only smell what we are smelling right now. Mm -hmm. Bacon and garlic. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the onion. So like, is yep. this somewhat of like the Holy Trinity minus Ooh. carrots? I'm not sure. Uh, oh, yeah. The carrots, the carrot. carrots, onion, and, and celery. celery. That's what it is. Trinity. That's true. Yeah. No, it smells so good. It smells so good. So I don't have any onions or, or carrots or celery. What are you guys talking about? Oh, I didn't no, know. I was trying to learn. <laughs> yeah, I have no culinary of, anything. Not, not for carbonara, but like in the basics in a, of, yes. uh, a bolognese. Well, to me, a holy trinity yeah, would be bolognese. bacon so and onion. Sauce yeah. Or, um, anything like that. Oh, this is looking good. It smells amazing. Okay, so Tad, in your um, mm -hmm. description, you, you just mentioned that um, – the hour before mm -hmm. they're getting a talk to yes. kind, kind of do what we're doing now to kind of give them a flavor of what what they're about what to they're see. about to see. Who, who did you mention? So Dr. Anna Barker. I don't know who that yeah, is. She's a lecturer and a professor down at the University of Iowa. Oh, and we okay. are just so fortunate to have her with us. She is the most knowledgeable person I've ever talked to on so many subjects and especially Napoleon, <laughs> her excitement and her energy and Here, her ability to, to tell the story <laughs> and give historical context to this is just remarkable. And it's just an opportunity to learn oh, a little yeah, bit I deeper understand. about what you're about to see. And so we're really fortunate to have her and this. have this happen before the opera. So definitely get there an hour early to see this talk. It's really, really worth it. And is that in the Encore Lounge? Or? Yes, it okay. will be in the okay. Encore Lounge, right on the side of the theater there. So that's kind of, well, from from the, um, well, no, you can go in the back way. Um, I, I don't but if know, you, If you come that in the be... front doors, the main front doors off of um, third, right, and you walk in the hall, the Grand Hall of Mirrors, the Encore Lounge is way, 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 not way, 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 but it's at the other end. Um, it's where one of the big, the big concession bar is, but it's um, at the far end, so down the hallway around the yeah, if you were to drive by yeah. like the ground transportation center and see all the beautiful lights in the window of the back of the Paramount, that's where you'll be. It's it's gorgeous and it's a wonderful place to be. Okay, so all of our spinach has wilted. I put the pasta back in. We're all getting a little steam bath here. Perfect. That's um, good for yeah. the board. It's, it's, it's good it's for singers. Your point. Yeah. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> right. So Mine after, too. Yeah. <laughs> After I drained the pasta, I, I put my top back on the pot because you want the pasta. You want all of this to be really hot um, because we need to uh, kind of semi-cook the raw eggs that we just did. Now, we don't want it on the heat, though, so it's obviously here and not on the stove because we don't want to scramble our eggs. So here is our pasta with the veggies in it. Now we're going to add... Perfectly incorporated Perfect. egg. Perfectly incorporated. Perfectly incorporated. Perfectly. A plus. A plus pad. The yeah. eggs and the pecorino. And then we're going to mix this up. That looks good. This is and I did add about massive. maybe a little more than a cup of the pasta water already in there to help with okay. that cream, kind of making it into a cream sauce. And yeah. stick to the pasta. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now I do this, and then obviously we're going to, mix this very very well i do this with all of my pastas 
all of our noodles go back in the pan mm -hmm. with the sauce. Yeah, of course. Because when well, but like when you see some restaurants or some TV shows, they do um, you know, the plate of pasta and then the sauce is on the top. The top like that yeah. is not Italian. No, I'm sorry. You, no, this is it's all about home cooking. <laughs> yeah. Putting it on the stove and having yep. all your kids come and get it. You know? <laughs> and it's all mixed. Like you've got to like mix the the pasta with the sauce. Mm -hmm. It's right? gotta get in it's And that's why they have different there. excuse me. Uh, different right. pastas with different shapes and everything because they mm -hmm. all incorporate the sauce so much different. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they get stuck in the crevices yes. of, you know, or the Which or is something. fabulous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually using angel hair pasta instead of a spaghetti or a fettuccine, uh, mainly because I want to taste the sauce. Mm -hmm. Like, we're obviously going to taste the pasta, but I want it. I love mm -hmm. it saucy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I like, I like making, so if I make my own spaghetti, I try to almost make it like an angel hair. So it's really <laughs> thin. Yes. And I get nice and saucy. Okay. Let's plate Tosca this up. Tosca is saucy. Tosca is yes. saucy. And get, thank you. That joke number three. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> thank you and good night. <laughs> Woo! Look at this, that you guys. Awesome. Oh, oh, that looks amazing. And the nice turn. Oh, my gosh. Also, please, nobody break their spaghetti or their mm. angel hair. <laughs> when you put it in the pan, yeah. the water. Oh. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay. I let's... even knew that one. Uh -huh. There we go. Okay, so here is our uh, pasta carbonara from Italy. Bravo! Maria Natale yeah. with our pancetta, our bacon. Let's get a fork. Oh. Mm -hmm. Here, actually, we could all just do one, right? We can do one. Oh, yeah. yeah. And share this because we need to taste this. Okay. Mm -hmm. I feel like I need a bigger fork. And we're going to taste yeah, this. We need to have a little bit of all the pieces, right? I just want the and bacon. we technically we should have a spoon, right, to like do our little twirly. But that's at the table. Mm. Oh my god, you guys! This is the part I've never learned how to eat on camera. Let me tell you. I know. No, there's no right. You that's know, delicious. Just, just okay, what again. do you think, Maria? That's delicious. It's Yay! delicious. <laughs> it's delicious. Follow this recipe. It's amazing. <laughs> and come to the opera. Come to the opera. You should just cook a whole bunch in salad and salad and It'll be fine. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope you enjoyed this special event with the Cedar Rapids Opera. Maria, thank you so thank much you so for much being here. You. <laughs> this is so amazing. And Tad, thank yes, you for thank being you, here. Yes, thank you so much. Cedar Rapids Opera, Tosca, next weekend, artsiowa.com. Get your tickets. Go down there. Uh, Cedar Rapids Opera, follow them, like them, comment, share, do all that stuff on social media. Me too. Gia's Italian Kitchen. Like, share, follow, subscribe. Do all those things. Help us both grow. And make right? the recipes. This yeah. is delicious. <laughs> this is great. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Stay warm if you're in the Midwest. Thanks for joining. Let's get cooking. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>